Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. I'm very excited. We are here with PC and Kristen Cast for Found, the fourth book and final book in the series. And I'm going to go ahead and let them talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on. And then I have some questions. And then hopefully you guys have some questions as well. So make sure in the comment section down below, write all the questions that you have and I will be your earpiece and I will literally read your questions for them to answer for you. Yay. Guys, take Yay. a look. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for being patient with our technical difficulties that none of us understood why they happened to begin with. So whatever, but thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Um, we want to start by, um, we'll answer questions, of course, when you guys put them in, but we also know that you guys are going to ask us certain questions, mm -hmm. and usually at the top of your list is uh, our questions about the TV series. Yeah. So, yes, that is still a thing, um, but of course, right now, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so our very next step, right as the pandemic was just starting, um, our producers were going out to networks. And as soon as a network picks us up, the very next step is we begin casting and then filming. Yeah. So right now, the best thing that you guys can do, because everything's paused because we can't cast and we can't film. We can't cast <laughs> and we can't film yet. Um, so the best thing that you guys can do to help us out is if you have a favorite network and Chris and I, I mean, we have, we have lots of favorite networks. Mm -hmm. But so we're not asking you to go mm -hmm. to any certain network. We're asking you to just go to your favorite network, contact them and say, pick up the House and I TV series because yeah. fan enthusiasm is really important and it's important to stay in their mind's eye during this, this whole pandemic so that when it's over, they'll be like, oh yeah, House and I, those, those fans have been talking to us this whole time. So that is the answer on the TV series. We're still very excited about it. We love our producers and we are highly involved. Don't worry, we're highly involved. And also um, back in the fall of last year when we could still go places and we were on tour, one of our producers joined us at a location, actually in Tulsa. In Tulsa. Yeah, and he said that whenever it does come time to start casting, that he was going to do like an open, they want to do like an open call where they would put part of the script online and you guys could send in your videos of you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's super cool. So, That's so super exciting. Really, yeah, and as soon as we know more information about that, like Phyllis said, we are kind of like in this holding pattern at the moment. But as soon as we have information about casting, we will definitely post that so you guys can send in your videos. They totally want like new talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're really excited about it. We want, we would love to see the all the nerd herd, the fresh faces, new talent, and you people in the UK, see, you guys will be able to audition. Once well, UK people- well, anywhere could. Anywhere. I hear from the UK a lot saying, <laughs> we want to audition. <laughs> so you guys can all audition. The whole planet. The whole planet can audition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kristen, why don't you tell them what you have coming next? Oh, yes. So I usually have it here, but I don't, of course, the day that I'm talking about it. Um, so in October, October, on October 13th, I have a new book release called The Key to Fear. It's the first book in a trilogy, and it's, um, <clears throat> coincidentally, uh, it's a, like, post, it's a dystopian fiction uh, 50 years after a virus has wiped out, like, 90% of the population, and it was a virus spread by touch, so no one's allowed to touch anymore, and a pharmaceutical company is in charge of the world, and it's about overthrowing the government. <laughs> I your voice. When, Cause you wrote this like, like a, a two, year ago, two years a ago. A year ago, a uh, little more than a year ago. Yeah. But I had the idea like five years ago. Yeah. That's why I'm getting, and, and she wrote it way before the plague. Okay. Oh. So a little clairvoyance going on here. What can I say? Like an oracle or something over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> Overthrowing the government, plagues. Yes. Clear at all. <laughs> well, if you guys are ready to jump into it, we have our first question. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so this one is from Mary, and this is, what was your favorite part about writing the conclusion to the other world with a giant smiley face? Yeah, Phyllis, what was your favorite part? Because she writes them, just like the original House of Night series, she writes, I'm pointing to her box, like you guys can see on the screen. I don't know. I'm what it looks like. She writes them. Phyllis writes them, and I am the first line, I almost said of defense, I guess it is for your the reader's sake. I edit them. <laughs> First line. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go on. <laughs> she protect um, everyone's hearts, right? Yes. <laughs> there you go. She cuts my words. Actually, that's what she does. <laughs> uh, I just try to ignore that. Uh, I the the coolest part of writing found for me was like concluding everything, tying everything up. I really like 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 about the last three chapters during the whole climax and the conclusion. I love how everything came together. I cried really hard while I was writing it. Mostly it was good cry though. This time you guys, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to upset very many of you this time because I don't think I've killed off anyone this book that you're going to miss very much. Yeah. So it was, I really enjoyed the conclusion. I, Heath comes back in towards the end and there's a very nice um, closure there for that. And I really like what happens with Neferet and other Neferet. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say too much though about that. Um, and I also left, for those of you guys, because all you guys are like, is it really the last book? I'm like, yeah, it's the last book in this in this series. But I leave this giant barn door open at the end. But we have no plans right now of writing anything else. Not right now, no. We want to really focus on the TV series. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very active with that. And Chris and I are also um, in the middle of writing the second book in our new series um, that will release next year, Sisters of Salem. It's about witches. It's about witches. Yeah. That is the next question from Jesse. Is the Teen Witches series still coming next year? So that's Ooh, yes, it's like reading our minds. Right. The first book is already finished, and it's been edited, and they're starting to do cover stuff. So it should be out spring summer twenty twenty one. Mm hmm. The first it one sounds like it's like forever away. It's only a year away. But saying 2021 makes me feel like a space traveler. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's from Jesse. It says, Kristen, any news on when the other series you did will be published or finished? No. So she's talking about the escape series in the third book, Cerulean Sea. People ask me this all the time, though, um, which is weird because I could have sworn like 10 people read it. Maybe it's just the same 10 people contacting me over and over again. <laughs> Your mother read it. It's a lot. My mother read it. Um, so there was an issue with my publisher. And I'm, it only, all of this only had to do with me because I'm the author. But there was an issue with them. And um, they broke contract. And therefore, I no longer work with them. It was not a healthy working environment. And so now I have this series that I didn't finish. And I now need to spare time to write it and put it out by myself and i don't have spare time so i don't know i know what it is i have the first draft of it written i know what happens um i don't know i don't feel like any of this is making me feel better <laughs> <laughs> i know i don't know i know some things and i don't know the important things like what it's going to happen i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> Your only answer. So this question is from Maddie, and it says, "What made you want to write the Other World series?" I did. I yelled. I did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Oh, I mean, Kristen. Yeah, it was Kristen. It was. It was. It was me because okay. So we were fast approaching the 10th anniversary of the like original when March came out, and I was like, "Ooh, Phyllis." This was like, I don't know. 2016, like sometime in 2016 you said this. Because the thing was 2017 was when the... Um... Yeah, but it was like nine months 
nine or 10 months before the um, 10th anniversary of March, I was like, oh, Phyllis, hey, the 10th anniversary is coming up. You should do something. I was like, like what? Um, and I'm, you know, what am I going to do? And she was like, oh, yeah, well, maybe I could like, and then she went for like two or three months trying to figure out a way to not write a book and she, like, and do all these other things. And I was kept being like, no, 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 those are all just terrible ideas. And it, with how long it took her to actually settle on the fact that she could write a book, she could have already written the book. So at the very last minute, she's like, oh my God, I should write a book. And I'm like, yes, you should write a book. Jeez. So then, but then it, when I decided, okay, I'm gonna have to write a book and I can't just write like one book. It has to be like more because I can't finish it all in one book. So I, so I knew it was going to be probably three or four books. And then it took me like, what, Kristen, another month or two to actually start writing it because I hadn't written yeah. in the house of night world for like three years or four years or something. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can go back. I don't know if I can do it. I can't. I simply can't. We live and in then, Portland. We used to yeah. live in Tulsa. We live, we both live in Portland right now, not, to, not together, but um, we mm -hmm. live in Portland. And when she started writing The Other World, she was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to like move back to Tulsa because I can't possibly, I was like, what did you live there for like 40 years? I'm pretty sure that you can, <laughs> like, it'll be okay. It was like, You're like, I believe in you, you can do it. <laughs> right? She was like, woman, you actually go back to Tulsa frequently too yeah, like, so, this is not like, a problem she really did she finally just yelled at me and was like just write the damn book and I was like oh my god okay and once I sat down and started writing it it was like I had taken this horrible long hot dirty bus drive to try to get home but once I was home it was like I mean how long did it take me to write that book it was during a snowstorm and I was snowed in for part of it. Yes. So all I did was write, it only took me like a month and a half to write the book. Yeah, it took you like no time, but it took oh, wow. seven months of procrastination. It took like seven, it did. It, took it, was, like a long, it was indeed a long journey for us all. That's a new book quote. It's, it will take you half as long to write as it does to convince her to write it. Yes, <laughs> that's, it's exactly right. <laughs> So that's why I wrote it because Kristen told me I had to write a book. <laughs> and so I, I felt like it would be a really good celebration for all of our readers, especially. Well, I think, when... Yes. I was about to say, I think just from looking at the comments that all the readers would most assuredly agree with Kristen on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut Phyllis, off. just write the damn book. <laughs> All right, all right. This is what it, this is like a lesson on listening to your editor, right? <laughs> <laughs> For reals, at, at my, the editors in New York don't usually say, "Don't write the damn book." No. <laughs> it's my daughter editor who says that. <laughs> okay, we've got our next question from Sedona, and this is. Can I ask how you decided on Darius for Aphrodite in the original House of Night books? I've always loved how beautifully broken Aphrodite is, but that Darius is there for her. I, I, I say the emojis. <laughs> lots of emojis. I love Darius and Aphrodite. I love Aphrodite. She's so much fun to write. Um, I really hadn't settled on, I didn't, I didn't, like plan, okay, Darius and Aphrodite are going to be a thing forever and ever, and he's going to help her heal through her brokenness by just really, so, Darius just really gives her a safe place. That's all. Um, I didn't plan all that, but as this happens quite frequently to me with my characters, Darius decided he was going to love Aphrodite no matter what. And so as I kept developing him and writing him, it was more and more Darius was just like, I'm going to, I'm going to love this woman and I'm going to support her and give her the first really safe place she's ever known to be herself. And he was just going to trust and believe that Aphrodite was brave enough to love him. And she was. So yay for Darius. Nice. Darius. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see, this is from Candace, are we going to see any more on the disasters? Um, no. <laughs> I didn't mean to say all that, but um, 
Um, what happened with the disasters is, Kristen, stop laughing over there. Um, what happened with the disasters is that our publisher, Macmillan, was, for the disasters, was disappointed in the sales of all the YA superhero books mm. that came out all around the same time. And look, Constance is a bookseller. She's nodding her head going, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you know. And so um, I don't know if you guys know really how, uh, a lot about how publishing works, but you propose series way before you write them. And way before they show up on the shelf, you propose series. So we had proposed some time ago um, a few different series, things that we would like to write. So um, Macmillan already had those proposals and they were like, um, could you write this one instead? And so we were, I mean, we were disappointed and we were like 65,000 words into um, writing the second book. So we were really disappointed yeah, about all that was wasted way. energy and creativity. <laughs> yeah, but um, we also, I mean, we loved all the serious proposals that, I mean, we don't propose series we don't want to write. Right. And so when they were like, how about this witchy one? We were like, ooh, how about the witchy one? So that's, so no, we, um, you won't see disasters coming out with McMillan, no. Okay. And then someone was also asking about the Moon Chosen series as well, and I'm not sure if it might have been. Oh, time. Tales of a New World. Um, you guys can go to, I have, I, yes, there is a fourth book in Tales of a New World. Um, you can go to my website, pccastauthor.com, um, and you can find uh, all the updated information on that. You can also read a, uh, an interview with my editor, and you can also read a whole additional scene from Wind Rider. Um, what happened with that was I had the first three came out. Uh, Moon Chosen Sun Warrior and Wind Rider came out. And then, of course, those, everyone who's read Wind Rider knows the story's not done. And... Uh, right around the time that Wind Rider came out, I had a really bad accident. Um, actually, a month after Wind Rider came out, because it was November 8th, 2018. I had a bad accident out at my barn, not my horse's fault. It was just an accident. And I could not write for um, a lot longer than I would like to admit that I couldn't write. She got kicked by her horse. She, it was an accident, though. She I didn't know, but all you said was an accident. She got kicked. I did get kicked really, really hard. Well, it doesn't even matter. It's a horse. She could have kicked you lightly. Right. It, still, it, would have been, it wouldn't have been fun either way, right? But um, it took me a long time to recover from that. As a matter of fact, right. I am Almost just... Years. Yeah, I'm just... I, I, I had surgery in February as my final recovery. I can lift my arm up over my head now, which is really big. For the first time since <laughs> November 2018. Yeah. yeah, and um, so that really messed up my schedule. When I was supposed to be writing um, the fourth book, which is titled Earthwalker, um, when I was supposed to be writing it, I was trying not to die. <laughs> yes, and then as I recovered enough to actually write, I already had contracts that I had to fulfill. So the House of Night, the other world contracts, and the contracts I have with Kristen, too, um, for Sisters of Salem, and some other things, too. So that got shifted down to kind of the bottom of my pile, but um, I will get that book out, I promise. And then we have from Katie, one of my questions is if you can tell us, in the book Forgotten, the poem about how Kelowna is freed in other heathens' world, is it speaking of Casey? from Zoe's world that says, when the dead joins with fire and water red. Oh, you can't, I can't tell you. You'll okay. find out, you'll find out and found though. You know, dramatic music, you have to read to find out. Right. <laughs> yeah, terrific. Yeah, all those, those questions will all be answered and found. Okay. And then this is from Lisa. This says, what got you started writing? Me? Both of you. Both of us, me, I wrote my first book in first grade. Blubby the Blue Whale. It didn't get published yet. Um, <laughs> uh, I've always, I can't remember not writing and not reading. And I always have. And I tried to write, I like, I tried, I wrote a book in first grade. I tried to write a book in eighth grade, um, Nurse Janice. I wanted it to be a Harlequin romance. 
Um, but I couldn't please, figure out how to please one day. <laughs> but I um, couldn't figure out how to move my characters from one scene to another, so I had to give up. <laughs> and so I just, but I just kept circling back around to being an author. It was like it was like being a teacher. I mean, I'm, I'm an Air Force veteran, and I did a lot of things in my life before I came to teaching, but I always knew I was going to teach. And the same thing with writing. I always knew I was going to be an author. I knew I was going to be a best-selling author. I always knew I was. Awesome. I got to a point where I had to, at the end of the House of, original House of Night series, where I had to have, like, a real job, <laughs> like, of my own and not just with my mom. <laughs> And it was either go back to college or try. She, okay, she does not like school. I have a whole thing about that. So that's another Zoom live stream of it. There's a whole soapbox she would get on about that. <laughs> um, so I, I decided to write a book. God, that sounds <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so I've been doing this though since I was 19. I've been editing, I've been involved in the publishing world in some capacity since I was 19 years old, editing not only the House of Night series, but other series um, for Macmillan. So it's not, I didn't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to write a book. I don't have any experience, but I'm going to do it. So <laughs> I did it. And luckily, I'm not terrible at it. And I didn't You're have to feel good at it, Kristen. You're real good at it. Some say I'm really good at it. It's not just my mom. Other people do. <laughs> but yes, I didn't want to go back to school because I don't like it there. <laughs> well, I think that's pretty badass. The, well, I don't want to do this, so I'm going to write a book and get it published and look at all the people who will say <laughs> Because that is what happened. <laughs> Okay, um, Mary is asking, will you be doing the street team again? Um, we are doing an abbreviated street team for the release of Found um, because we have street team members all over the United States and the different states are in different levels of reopening. And I also am going to be very careful about protecting my street team. I've been in isolation since the 4th of March and I won't be coming out until there's a viable treatment or a vaccine. So I am being very, very, I mean, Kristen, I have to isolate from Kristen. I mean, we see each other and stuff six feet away with masks on, yeah. but yeah. But um, our street team is, they're going to have signed book plates and they're going to give them to the bookstores that are open or Walmarts that, that are carrying the book. Um, I am encouraging my street team not to go in the stores to mm -hmm. contact the managers and have them just curbside drop off um, some some book plates that we've signed, and yeah, then take they picture. didn't do a new, new call. No, we didn't. Do, no. Yeah, no, we didn't do call. Yeah, and you guys can get signed books from and get them personalized. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have signed books from Mysterious Galaxy, and then you can get personalized book plates. So. Um, yeah. I put the wrong link. I put the Zoom link meeting, so please don't click that. I will promptly kick you out of the meeting if you kick it. If you if you click on that, um, but we've posted the correct link for the books, and I will also we'll we'll do some social media posts. Who well. are you guys? You can just join the Zoom call. <laughs> we love you. I know. I wonder why I'm seeing like people. That that was a bad, that was a host error, so I very much apologize for that. <laughs> but um, but yes, you can actually get signed books from us. And I remember actually last year we had someone from your street team street team come into the store, and it was actually really 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 cool getting to meet them. And have them. We have an awesome street team. We have lots of really strong members. Some have been with us for like I don't know if any street team veterans are listening. Tell how many like. Uh, missions you've been on. Some have been on like six and seven missions. Shout it out in the comments below because I'm going to give them the link so they can read all of your comments, everybody. But um, okay, this is from Mary. This says, I have been to the Isle of Skye, beautiful fairy Glen. How did you decide to use that in your books? Um, well, I too have been to the Isle of Skye. He went without me. I wasn't even invited. 
I went with my Scottish lover instead. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. His name coincidentally was Sharas too. <laughs> um, I I was I spent a lot of time in Scotland. I love Scotland. It's like a second home. And I knew that I wanted to um, mix in Celtic mythology. Um, my ancestors are from Wales. Bowman cast came over from Wales to America in 1748. We've tra- you know, we've gone traced all the ancestry and everything, and so I'm I'm a big old Celt, and I go over there a lot. So I was over there right as I was starting to write whatever book it was where the black bulls are being introduced. <laughs> Kristen knows this. Kristen's laughing because there's a funny story about the black bulls too, but um, or the black and white bulls, but. Um, I was over there and I was surrounded by Scots and we, they started telling me stories and um, I just started researching and decided that I wanted to look into Skyatch, the great taker of heads, who was actually a queen who lived on the Isle of Skye um, centuries and centuries ago. So my Scottish lover and I, um, <laughs> We, I went up to the Isle of Skye and spent a bunch of time up there and hiked around in wellies and, and cool story is the Goddess Grove is actually right, right across the street. (laughs) It's like right across from the ruins of Skyatch's castle. And I went into the grove with my lover and he brought his bagpipes. Okay. Cause he was a real Scotsman. And, um, he started playing the bagpipes for me in this grove. It was raining, but inside the grove, the rain wasn't coming through. And so I was sitting on one of the Isle of Skye big marble boulders, and I was listening to him very romantically um, play um, bagpipes for me. And these Highland cows, you know, they have big horns and they're red and all shaggy, real cute, okay, all shaggy and huge. They came into the grove and they made a circle around us and they just stood there and listened to him play the bagpipes. It was so magic. It was so awesome. You couldn't even make something like that up. That's, it was fabulous. That's so cool. <laughs> also, I just want to see like the count of Lava to eye roll and somehow make a drinking game out of it because that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is <laughs> blushing. <laughs> you know, <wait. laughs> So this is going to be from Sedona, and it is, what would your advice to independent authors be, specifically when it comes to graphic novels? How was working with an artist in regards to bringing your original characters to life? Never apologize for multiple questions, Sedona. <laughs> Kristen, that's Kristen's, this is Kristen's venue. Can you repeat the end of it? Sorry, my thing is like, yes. glitchy. how was working with an artist in regards to bringing your original characters to life? Um, okay. Do you have any advice for someone doing a graphic novel? That was the first part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, art, like, um, if you are not an author illustrator and have not worked in the graphic novel space before with illustrators, they, I write graphic novels. Let me start saying that, first of all. Um, but the artists speak a very different type of language than um like a a especially like a prose author does or even like a graphic novel author like the to get what you see in your head and convey that to an artist is its own special magic and um i work with an editor to do that because i don't know i I've done several graphic novels and I still don't really understand how to speak to an artist in the way they need to be spoken to, to facilitate that kind of like amazing relationship. So where when they send in and when they send in sketches, I can't see, like, I don't understand what it's supposed to look like. Cause they'll send kind in, Phyllis, you know, that's from seeing the sketches of the disasters graphic novel. They'll send like the, the boxes, but in, in them, it's, Cause when I say sketch, I think of like maybe like a stick figure 
or like a very, like a rough outline, but you can still kind of like tell that someone's like, Ooh, you know, you can't, I can't see any of that stuff. It's like a circle where I think a face goes. And then the rest of it, I don't know what any of it is. And my editor knows when he looks at it, he can, he completely understands. He's like, Oh no, I think we need to have them, you know, tilted more this way or whatever. So-and-so in frame and someone in the back or like off. And I'm like, I don't know what, I don't understand. Cause by the time you get the final version, it's too late to change anything. But, um, I digress. So it's really amazing when you do get the final and you have kind of this almost mini movie to look at from what you wrote. It is difficult just because it's so different mm. from writing in a book. Right. How, 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 would they, how would they learn how to do it? What's your advice about that? I don't know because if I could learn how to do it easily, I would have, I would, I would know how to do it. <laughs> well, I, well, then they probably need to go the route that you've gone, which is to find an experienced graphic novel editor who freelances, and then that person can can help walk them through the process, right? I mean, that's what that's what you. Yeah, do. yeah. I'm. I also like. I've read a lot of script writing books, but that's on how to. It's not necessarily the same research, I think is the answer, but I don't know exactly how to do it. I'm fortunate enough to be able to have, I have access to a very talented um, graphic novel editor. And so I have used him for that, but I don't, it's, it's difficult. Like I don't even, I can't even articulate an example of what I'm talking about because it's so, it's like that part of my brain is not engaged. And Kristen does have a graphic novel out right now that um, her agent is shopping for her that yeah. you should um, keep an eye out for because her mother's read it. It's real good. Okay. And that ties into the next question <laughs> by Garcia at Segway, which is, do you, either of you have any other series you've not announced in the works? Yes. And Don't I have a feeling, can you tell us about them or? Kind of. You go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, I feel like Phyllis and I always have things that we're doing in the background, you know, when we find um, opportunities. And the reason, because I know that some people are going to say like, well, if you have time to write these other things you haven't announced, why have you finished all the things that you have started? And that would be because no one's, there's not a possibility of getting paid to before we begin doing that. And because this is our career, um, we have to know that when we write something and give it to our agent and it's shopped, there's a strong possibility that we will get hired to produce the entire book and we get paid a portion of our entire income upon signing our contract and if we write something like the last book in the escape series i will not get paid for that maybe ever it depends on how many people buy it so that is that reason first of all and by myself i don't tend to write uh like fantasy or paranormal stuff i love stuff about killing so I write a lot of stuff about teenagers killing people. She's so, real disturbing. Popular with our readers, so. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm writing a thing that is like um, a coming of age. It's like the very, like it's set in the 90s. And it's a very like coming of age story, like oh these people are going to be detectives and like solve this murder. Tell them your title. Tell them your title. Oh, it just I titled it murder horror thriller because that's it's like these like it's not really probably going to be titled that when it's published, but that's my. <laughs> I hope it is. I like it. But it's like a sweet coming of age story until it's not. Let the murders begin. Can the cover art just be like teenagers dot 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 killing? Can that yes. just be? <laughs> that should be what it is. <laughs> and so this question's from Stephanie. Is are we going to see any H O N novella? I believe you guys answered this earlier. Nothing currently in the works, right? There's nothing in the works currently because of um, the TV series. Huh. Because I want to give the I want to 
any house on night attention I want to pay right now is going to go towards the TV series. Um, I would in the future consider writing a um, novella about Grandma Redbird, although I don't know if I could tell the whole story in a novella. And I would like to write um, Skyatch and Sharis' story. That would be a cool novella to write too. I would do that. Um, what I have in the works right now, um, besides what I'm writing with Kristen, the, the Sisters of Salem books that Kristen and I are writing together, um, is I started writing a year ago, I started writing a, um, an adult apocalypse novel. Um, it's not, unlike Kristen's, it wasn't a pandemic, <laughs> but it was, it's, it's like kind of nuclear kind of, it's, it's, it's cool. And it turns into more fantasy than sci-fi too. Uh, the first book's called Green is Blood and I'm almost done with it right now. And then my agent will be shopping it. I have a, um, a Celtic book, um, a YA book about- um, You can't handle the clairvoyance going on in this event. Sorry, the next question is any ideas for a Celtic-based series? Oh my God, yeah. I have, <laughs> actually, I, I have um, worked on a retelling, a YA retelling of the Bodica story that, um, that no one has purchased yet, but uh, I have about a third of it done. <clears throat> So those, those two things. Then Kristen and I have like, we literally have a whole list of uh, books, series that we want to write together. And we just kind of check off the next book on the list and then go down to the next series on the list. <laughs> and let's see, this question is, this ties into TV, but it's, do either of you have any favorite TV shows right now? Maybe some recommendations while everyone is at home for such a long time. Oh my gosh, yes, okay. <laughs> Chris and I both just binged um, from Hulu, great. Yeah. Oh, great. Where it has, the, it oh. has the star at the bottom and it's like, occasionally historically accurate. Yeah. <laughs> that made it, me so happy. Right, it was, I love, we loved it. I loved it, I want the second season now. It was so good. Um, I agree. And I love, I've just binge Killing Eve too. I love that. And oh my God, the magicians, please, where is the next, where's the next season? I love the magicians so much. I, what about you, Kristen? Any ones that you have been loving? Well, <laughs> the newest, or the last season of Supernatural just came out on Netflix. So I'm really excited about that. I am, I go through these spells where I watch like actual TV shows that are made up like fictional stuff. And then sometimes all I do is watch reality television. So I made the mistake of starting to watch Love, the last season of Love Island UK, which oh my I, gosh. I thought it was like, you know, <laughs> doing the same thing. When, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like, and America, like, you know, in the United States, when we have reality shows, they don't go on for that many episodes. These shows have, like, 50 episodes and stuff. And so I got to episode 18, and I asked my significant other to, I closed my eyes because I didn't want to know what was going to happen. And I had him look at how many episodes there were, and there were, like, 38 episodes. But I felt like I had gone so far that I had to know what happened. So there are some people I didn't like, and I just, like, fast forward through their stuff. Story. Yep, that, um, my uh, life right now you pretty much perfectly summed it up and I'm now in a darker hole of depression that you have told me there is like 38 episodes I'm like oh I'm at like 18 and I thought I was getting towards the end how does it go so long I thought maybe there'd be 21 because sometimes in the states are like 21 or maybe 24 episodes if it's like a crazy thing so I was like okay I'm almost there no it's not true so that's what just happened to me and she and keeps telling me about her. that, and it was it. She's making me laugh so hard about it that I wrote it into Sisters of Salem. I have one of our characters <laughs> binging that that um, that TV series, that reality show. Yeah, mm -hmm. that show will suck you in. It is. You it have made me feel so much better to know that there is someone else out there going through. That. <laughs> <laughs> if you need it, if you want reality television that has like fifty plus episodes. Love Island UK on Hulu, and now I've been practicing my accent, and I feel like I could go there and just fit right in. 
I could not. I'm from Essex today and I'll be from Jordy tomorrow. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> so this question has come up a couple times. We have people wondering, I feel like we get this a lot, especially for YA events, but what are some tips, tricks for beginning writers trying to crack into the industry, into the publishing world? Just starting. <laughs> I'll start. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Do something that most young authors do not do. Research the job of being a writer, of being a professional author. Know how a book goes from here to the computer to the bookshelf. And you will be steps ahead of a whole herd of people who are like, I want to be an author. And now what happens? Because people like have these rose colored glasses on about our, our career, our job. And it's really, it's, it's an awesome job. It's yeah. really hard. Chris and I always go, writing's hard <laughs> and whine at each other about it. But because it's been romanticized so much, people don't learn the trade. They don't think of it as a real job. So, so many people go into be, wanting to be an author blindly and don't know anything about the process of editing or publishing. Like for instance, editors don't correct your grammar and punctuation and spelling. They don't, that's not their job at all. And when you research um, how a manuscript becomes a book, you find out that that's not their job at all. So not only is it responsible and the, uh, the smart thing to do to research your career, but it's also, it will also put you steps ahead of people who don't know what they're doing. So that's my advice. What's your advice, Kristen Francis? Um, I don't know, because <laughs> I feel like right now I'm at like a really weird place um, with the publishing industry and <clears throat> um, to be honest, if I knew the things that I know now, I would have chosen a different career. So I love writing books. Um, but well, tell them why. Tell them why that you, you said that. I know uh, why you said it, but tell them why. The publishing industry is racist and misogynistic. And it is run by a bunch of men. Um, Even though that you'll probably have a female editor. The planned female editor who does not get paid enough money. Yeah, and even a female publisher. Mm -hmm. um, it's still, misogyny is, uh, is a thing. And of course, racism is a thing. Yeah, so I feel like I'm in a strange place. I, know, I don't know really that I want to tell people that this is something they should pursue. Because I don't know whether or not, a lot of days I don't know whether or not it's worth it. Yeah. Especially lately. So, um, I don't know, my advice I guess would be to have a backup plan because you can burn out very quickly. Um, another thing about publishing that people who are not published don't understand is traditional publishing. Once you turn in that manuscript, you have very little control over your career. You have very little control over what happens with your book, even bestsellers. Like for instance, um, Kristen and I have been bestsellers for more than a decade and we just had a series canceled, the disaster series because the books weren't doing well. So, and we had, we had zero control over that. We, you know, that it's publishing is very odd that it's a career that you produce a product and then you just like, you let go of any of your, any ability to make it more successful, to make it successful, to make it live or not live. It's just like, I'm going to put this out there. And those of you who write know, you spill your guts and your soul. And then you earn, a lot of times um, what you earn per book is less than 10% of the cover price. Yeah. And that's 
like if it I didn't write it, it wouldn't be a thing. So is that worth it? Yeah. 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 Um, I think that I mean that's the reality. And I think it's like you said, it can be romanticized and it's it's good for people. And a lot of people in the comments are saying too, thank you for your honesty and for the actual reality of what it is, not the rose colored glasses perspective. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Katie has a question for us that is in the HOM series, the vampires and fledglings can't have children. And loved Aphrodite was told by Nyx after her terms as Nyxie's prophets of judgment she will be human and have children and many grandchildren. Yep. My question is, can the male vampires have kids with humans or is it just in this case because Nyx gave her a gift so she could have children with Darius? No, they can't. Um, the, when the change happens, there's such a physiological difference that goes on um, inside the human's body, whether it's male or female, that it burns out, it, they're no longer fertile. There's no reproductive stuff that goes on at all. Um, the reason why Aphrodite is going to be able to have children is only because she's gonna step in. And when she, when all of her tattoos are gone, all of her mark, her facial tattoos are gone, um, she's gonna be human like that. And then she's gonna live a, what? They won't be Darius's children. No, they won't be, Darius will be dead. No, they won't be dare, dare. Vampires aren't immortal. My vampires aren't immortal. They're very long lived. I would imagine it's going to take, you know, a hundred years or so for Aphrodite to get rid of her mark. In my head, it was like not that long. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know why I made it so much faster because I always assumed that Darius would outlive her because she would like burn through her mark. I don't know why I thought that. No, Aphrodite's not going to be burning through that mark very quickly, though. You know, she, oh, I don't know. She's there, she's like, wow. mm -hmm. No, you don't get a second chance. That's Aphrodite. <laughs> no, um, Darius will she'll have a full life with Darius, but then Darius is going to die, and by about that time, she will probably be burning through her mark, and she'll be human. So, so will she be like old? No, no, she, no because she's only going to look she'll probably look like she's somewhere in her 30s, early 40s. Okay. This question is from Mary. Did you ever consider doing something in the HON slash Otherworld universe in the French lavender fields since they are beautifully envisioned in Tulsa through Grandma Redbird? Wait, you were, you broke up just a little bit. Do, would I consider doing something in a French lavender field? Uh, yes. Did you ever can? Uh, do you ever consider doing something in the H O N Otherworld universe in the French lavender fields, since they are beautifully envisioned in Tulsa through Grandma Redbird? Um, I I have not thought about Grandma going to France at all. Um, I would I would like to go to the French lavender fields because I do love it. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but no, I have actually figured out what I'm going to do with Grandma Redbird so she is practically immortal. That it won't happen in Found. You don't see it in Found, but it's in my head and it will. It's safe right here. Okay, Grandma. Nothing will ever happen to Grandma Redbird. She's going to take a position that's going to make her um, special. But are you ever going to do anything with the French lavender fields? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I don't. <laughs> And I had a question for you. Um, when writing in multiple slash kind of like alternate universes, were there any rules that you had to set like from the very beginning with yourself and with your characters? Or how did you kind of handle and address that? It was actually, it was um, a kind of a difficult writing exercise because mm -hmm. I had to, because the, the people in both worlds, like let's take Stark. Stark is one way in our world and then other Stark is at his core, he's the same, both Starks are the same at their core. But then it's the um, nurture over nature thing. It's things changed with other Stark because of how his life unfolded in the other world. And I was constantly having to remind myself 
okay, no, that didn't happen to other Stark. How, how would his personality be different? So it was a really good, it was an interesting writing exercise for me. And it was way harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, I probably would have, would have figured out some way to make it easier had I known <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> but because my, my work, especially when I write alone, is so character driven uh -huh. that I had to be able to get into um, the other world's characters' heads. And I had to keep reminding myself about their differences in their lives. That's the only way I did it. It was just stop. This is not the same character. Go back and remember what their young life was like and then write from that. So it, was it could be so oh. easy to get them like start to muddle if you're not careful with it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, then I, well, I was lucky that though I've been writing, you know, I've been writing most of those characters for a decade. So the new characters were, there was a big delineation between the two for me. Nice. And we are close to the end of our event. So I have a fun question for both of you. Speaking of editing and everything, so much gets taken out of books. Were there any really fun or gnarly scenes from either one of your works that like you wish you could have left in there, but it just didn't work and you had to like take it out? But you're like, oh man, I'm still in love with this scene, and maybe one day. Yeah, <laughs> remember the the ball, Kristen? Remember that? <laughs> there is a scene. Okay, you guys, remember in the in the original House of Night books where Raphaim saves um, Stevie Ray from the Black Bull. In the original scene, the Black Bull rapes Raphaim. Now. Rafaim is still raped in the scene that was published, but you have to read between the lines to understand that. Um, mm. Because my daughter <laughs> cut all the stuff out of it that was too, that she said, she just wrote on the side. And I think this was when we were, were you still writing by hand? I don't know. I just remember seeing in red, it saying, no Phyllis, no. <laughs> She didn't, she made me take out the She, you, there are just so many, like, fluids. <laughs> so, I definitely, those are not in the books that you read. Yeah, she made, so, yeah, um, I would well, like that to have been the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that anything else, I feel like we tend to, I don't know that, and it's like, I think more little things like sentences, like here and there stuff gets taken out, but not besides like that, not anything. There aren't really big scenes that are taken out. We write but, really tightly when we write, especially when we write together, you know, we don't write the house and I together, but we're, I'm trying to think about what we're writing now. And Chris and I plot everything. When we write together, we, we plot the whole book out. And then we go back and plot literally chapter by chapter. We outline chapter by chapter. Oh, wow. Because um, that's how we know who's oh, writing. You know, yeah, like she called me the other day and she was like, it says that we need a chapter about this, but I don't think that we do. And so we know not to write it. So it doesn't need to get cut. It just isn't written. I think that tends to be more what we each do separately too. If we reach a place where we thought, oh, something is going to go here and then mm -hmm. it doesn't fit. Instead of writing it and cutting it later, it just doesn't get written at all. Got so it. I don't think we have any cool stuff. Because I know that some authors have enough stuff that they could like make another book with all the stuff they have cut out. And I'm just like, we don't know. My book would be full of like adverbs. The most beautiful, eloquent, flowing sentence that just never <laughs> ended, kept on going with no commas. <laughs> if you've got the cut person, per if you got the cut version of Kristen's book, the stuff that she cuts out, there would be adverbs and complex metaphors everywhere. Very abstract, complex metaphors. And if you saw my books, it would be all passive voice. Everything would be passive voice. <laughs> my editor's like, I love that this metaphor is really beautiful, but I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> So what you're saying is there's going to be a book of abstract metaphors coming out where no one knows what it's about, but they're beautiful. In a passive voice. Yes. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> well, that is going to be it for our time tonight, everyone. I just want to thank you guys have so many amazing readers. I'm going to send you the link so you can see. There's so much comment and love for all of your characters and for you guys and everything. But thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Don't forget, if you would like signed books, they can be found on our website. We'll also be posting on it on social media as well. And I'll repost the link that you can purchase those books in, in the comments section. But otherwise, we are going to sign out and say thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, guys. We love you. Thank you. And thank you, Andersons. No, this is Serious Galaxy. See, oh God! Wrong one. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anderson's is a real nice bookstore too, but <laughs> this is Mysterious Galaxy. <laughs> Mysterious Galaxy signing out, everyone. <laughs>